What is going on everyone, it's Javi from Mother Sponge 1000 and in this video we're going to take a look at 3 tropical disturbances, all of which have the potential of developing into a tropical storm. But before I begin, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather day content. So let's begin by taking a look at the 5 day graphical tropical weather outlook and of course we do see 3 disturbances, one of which has a high chance of developing within the, as early as 48 hours from now and we do have another disturbance which currently has some medium chance of developing 40% within the next five days and there's a possibility that it could increase as the storm continues to head on further westward and if the National Hurricane Center begins to detect that the conditions will become more favorable as it becomes um, as it moves further westward and if this were to develop into a tropical storm it likely would be considered tropical storm Earl at this point and then we do have this other disturbance in the middle of the Atlantic which now has a higher chance of um, developing than um, it was before with now still a low chance but the chance has risen from a 10% chance to a 30% chance within the next five days as it seems like the National Hurricane Center has detected that there's just enough of a closed center circulation to where it could uh, it could gain some convection and if this were to develop it will likely become a subtropical storm so it's only something to keep in mind despite the fact that it's primarily going to stay out the sea because this could become tropical storm fiona so if i were to uh, first show you guys invest 91l currently the tropical disturbance with the highest possibility of developing and we do see compared to yesterday there's a lot more convection surrounding the center circulation so we're beginning to see the center circulation become a lot more compact small and closed which means that this should develop into a tropical depression or a tropical storm um into tropical storm danielle in the very near future so we should see um so we should see the wind speed increase embedded in these thunderstorms and we do see a decent amount of dry air just on north of it that could be an inhibiting factor for this tropical cyclone as this continues the head further northwestward but we need to see how um how much dry air will see um we'll see as this continues ahead further westward at least the magnitude of the dry air to really determine if this will strengthen or not um if this will strengthen gradually or not as this continues the head further northwestward now taking a look at um, the water vapor energy we do see a decent amount of wind shear just to the north of it because we do have a little bit of an upper level low that's just to the north of it and we're over this storm however there is an upper level high which has reduced the wind shear quite a bit over the center of circulation which has allowed this storm to maintain its organization despite the fact that it's fairly close to very strong upper level winds that are equivalent to 30 to 40 knots just to the northwest and the southern, uh, southern portion of this storm but this upper level high should stay over the storm as it continues to move further northwestward which should reduce the wind shear um, surrounding the center of circulation of this storm as well as increase the divergence aloft which should allow for more convection to occur since there's a lot less air aloft that's pretty much pressuring down on the convection or preventing um or preventing an upward motion right around the center of circulation so that's only something to keep in mind we're gonna have to wait and see um how for um if this will be able to avoid the wind shear for a while as this continues ahead further northwestward we're just going to need wait and see how much um of an impact that upper level high will have and how large that area will be where the wind shear will be reduced to really determine how much it will strengthen as it says further northwestward now take a look at what the european model is stating and over the past several runs it's just been very lenient on bringing uh, of not really strengthening this much at all while the european model still wants to develop i'd say a tropical depression or tropical storm we do see that there's just too much dry air on the southern side for this to really develop or in um, um to develop a well-defined center of circulation for the wind speed to increase on all sides of this storm and that will definitely increase the pressure along the surface with with this much stable air and which will as a result reduce wind speed to a point where this won't strengthen as much as it heads for a northwestward as it'll maintain its strength as primarily a tropical depression or a very weak tropical storm because there's just too much stable air that's increasing 
the pressure along the surface for the wind speed to really increase and the rotation to increase. And we do see the European model fills us with south. And um, what is a little bit more concerned is that the European model is taking a track further southward, but it's also as a direct result of how weak this storm is because since this storm is so weak, the cloud tops and the overall the overall composition of this storm is very short with the cloud tops not moving very high up in the upper levels of the atmosphere so as a result upper level steering flows have less of an effect since the cloud tops are a lot lower in a weaker storm than let's say a stronger storm and that's part of the reason why the gfs model wants to steer this further northward than the than the european model because the storm is a lot stronger with the cloud tops a lot higher for the upper level winds to have more enough in of an effect with this storm and that effect is steering the storm further northward and the good news is that it'll move just north enough to where we're going to see an oncoming trough move through the northern atlantic which will eventually steer this out to sea and away from the united states coast so that's certainly good news that if we were to see a stronger storm this would stay further offshore but you still need to pay close attention right around bermuda because there is that possibility it could come relatively close you guys so um even if this doesn't directly impact you guys there's still a possibility of maybe the outer bands impacting you of rain showers impacting you guys associated with this tropical cyclone and of course rough surf should be the issue and a high rip current risk not only for bermuda but potentially for the east coast of the united states as well as this storm could potentially be very strong as this heads for a northwestward which will uh, which will turn up the waves along the east the western atlantic the point where even though the storm is hundreds of miles away it could still pose a high rip current risk for a lot east coast so that's only something to keep in mind for the east coast but i think the most likely scenario is that this will move up northward it seems like most of the ensemble members are agreeing that this will take a track on northward out to sea which is certainly good news just keep in mind of the rip current risk threat along the east coast of the united states so make sure to pay close attention to that here or what the ensemble members for the gfs model are stating and we do see a clear indication that the stronger the storm is the more likely it is to move further northward likely due to the fact that the upper low winds are pretty much coming from the south and um southwest which would steer the storm a little bit further northward than a, than it would for a weaker storm because the cloud tops are a lot higher so the upper low winds have more of an effect on the storm's trajectory so if this storm was stronger it'll move um northward more quickly and out to sea more quickly which is certainly good news however we do still see some and some members wanting to take this track for a southward closer to the caribbean islands but we do see that the storm is almost too weak to have much of any effect if it were to take a track for a southward which is certainly good news so um, I don't think this should be a major concern when it comes to direct impacts. You just need to pay close attention to our rip current risk along the East Coast and the Caribbean islands. So make sure to pay close attention to that. As the forecast seems pretty certain at this point, this will eventually take a track for northward. And if it doesn't, it will primarily be too weak to bring much of an effect anyways if it were to take a further southward track. So I don't think there should be much of a major concern as certainty is pretty high with this one based on what the computer models are stating. Now, um, taking a look at the model intensity guidance, we do see quite a few few ensemble members want to take this to hurricane status. So we definitely could expect a higher rip current risk. And of course, Bermuda needs to pay close attention. So make sure to keep that in mind as well. Now, taking a look at other tropical disturbances we're paying close attention to. Of course, we're paying close attention to this tropical disturbance now coming off the west african coast at this time it's a click to move just north of the cape Verde islands and now has a medium chance of developing but there's going to be several inhibiting factors for this tropical wave as it continues to move westward which we're going to have to pay close attention to of course there's going to be an abundance of dry air located right around the main development region which could prevent enough of an upward motion in the atmosphere from occurring and create a temperature inversion in the middle levels of the atmosphere for a limited amount of convection to occur and of course it will raise the pressure along the surface if we were to see an influx of dry air move right around the um move into 
the tropical wave. So that's certainly something to keep in mind. And of course, it's going to move a little bit further northward to where it could encounter sea surface temperatures below 80 degrees, which would definitely inhibit the amount of convection that could occur. So definitely factors we're going to need to keep in mind. But the good news is that at, that even if this does develop most ensemble members do agree that this will eventually take a turn up northward as there's going to be just enough of weakness and ridging to where this tropical wave could escape and pretty much move out to sea which is certainly good news as it's pretty typical for that to, uh, to occur with tropical waves moving this far up northward since they're moving this far up northward it's very rare for a uh, tropical wave this far north to not get caught up with uh, weakness and ridging or a trough moving through and move out to sea. We had, we have, we've had had um, more rare occasions where a storm that's this far north makes a check all the way on westward to make landfall in the United States, such as Hurricane Florence, which of course developed fa fairly far up north and pretty much made its entire check further westward without getting um, diverted out to sea and made landfall as a category one right around North Carolina and impacting South Carolina as well. But for the most part, tropical waves this far up north typically don't move very far west before getting caught up by potentially a jet stream dip or a trough dip, which steers us out to sea, which certainly good news that this will likely turn out to sea. And another tropical storm we're watching is this um, area of thunderstorm activity right here. So um, I think chances are is um, is that if this low pressure system ends up developing into a tropical cyclone, it'll most likely be a subtropical storm as it's going to need a little bit of barrel clinic influences to strengthen the, the wind speed around center circulation for this to be considered and any uh, named tropical cyclone. And also it's due to the fact that sea surface temperatures around this area are below 80, just below, just a hair below 80 degrees. So it's going to need some barrel clinic influences to help maintain the convection of this storm for this to really develop into a named tropical cyclone but it should be over warm waters enough to where it'll have its own independent um, center a cir closed center circulation for this to be considered a named storm now i'm um, saying look at the current um what the european model is forecasting we do see the european model not only wants to develop this into a tropical storm but we do see that the wind speed does increase um to a point where this does become quite a formidable hurricane thankfully it's well out to sea so it won't be much of a worry um and in terms of what the ensemble members are saying we do see quite a few of them want to take this um this invest coming off of west african out to sea and we do and most of them um, while there's some ensemble members wanting to develop this into a tropical storm, we do see quite a few of them that don't really want to do that. So um, the good news is that all three tropical cyclones don't seem to have any sort of direct, aren't going to seem uh, to have a, any direct impact on land, which is certainly good news. But still something to keep in mind when it comes to rip current risk for some areas, especially with Invest 91L. So make sure to pay close attention to that. But anyways, guys, I thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather content. And I hope you guys have a great day.